have not only like kind of processed all the information well, but it's caused by an extra chromosome 21, right? Mm -hmm. They did the this karyotype test to see where the extra 21st chromosome is located because then that could impact, um, you know, family planning um, risks or chances for y'all. Okay. Um, so this is actually, these are his chromosomes. So I, I okay. you know, it's been genetics. I always think that's cool. That this is good. I mean, he's already, he's holding his head steady. Mm -hmm. Jason, look over here. Hi, yeah, you heard your name. Hey, mama, baby. Hey, Tinkerbell, baby, bud, bud. Hey, my chum, boom, chum, boom, chum, boom, chum, boom, chum, boom, chum. Can we have a little talk? Hello, my Tinky. Can we have a little talk? Huh? You feel like talking about this? Hmm? Well, you got up at 4 o'clock this morning. Plain. That's a no-no. No, no, you, you can't be getting up at 4 o'clock in the morning. Waking me up like that. Clean. Clean in your bed. Come on now. Can you please not do that again? I'm talking to you. Stop. Stop. Stop looking up there. He ignored me. You know what he doing? I know he didn't just fall asleep. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, that is so childish for you to wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning. It's childish. He's still like sleeping. <laughs> hey, you see he's falling asleep? Mm -hmm. He's like drowsy. Because he woke me up at four o'clock in the morning. Would you be mad if I get you up at two? <laughs> <laughs> he's tired. That's, that's why you're tired, huh? That's why you're tired. Good, how are you? <laughs> Sorry, we're a bit late. It's okay. So, first, I'm going to go ahead and um, put him up here to get his weight and his height. Mm -hmm. Take all so, his clothes off? Yes. Thank you. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> uh oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, no. I don't think I want to take your diaper off. Yes, yeah. Take it, take it off on the table. <laughs> oh my goodness, look how you grab my beady. You can just leave him now so it's um, his mom. Alright. Why you kept this one going? I don't know. You gotta take your glasses off, bro. Yeah, sorry. You did? Mm -hmm. I'm just leaving his clothes off for you right now. Leave, yeah, you can leave him now because I'm about to unheat his hat. Oh, okay. okay. If I could stretch a little bit, that. JC on. All right. Thanks. My name is Melanie, and I'm a genetic counselor that will chat with y'all first. Um, are y'all mom and dad? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so what I'll do is just gather a little bit of uh, medical history information, mm -hmm. uh, touch base on all of that, draw out formal family history, and then talk about um, genetics a little bit. And I know he has a, a diagnosis of Down syndrome mm -hmm. um, already, so. I printed out that report for y'all and um, you know, I'd love to hear from y'all kind of, you know, where y'all are at in the the journey of, you know, I know he has a diagnosis, but how are y'all doing about it? Um, it? It was obviously very difficult at the beginning, so I feel like he was very like, I just had a traumatic um, birth with him, period. I know that a lot of babies like him comes with like sometimes heart issues mm -hmm. or, you know, things on the side, but he's really healthy as far as we know. He doesn't have any heart issues. He is doing therapy, so we have someone coming to our okay. home once a week. Great. Is it with early steps? Yes. Mm -hmm. Good. So yeah, that's just about it, but he's doing great. Everything is going yeah. fine. Good. Well, how are you doing then, Dad? I'm doing great. Yeah. Like she said, it's no major problems. It's just like the rest of the kids. Yeah. They and have yeah, yeah. And he is That's so right. happy. Like, all he does is smile. Like, he makes us really happy. <laughs> and his siblings love him, so. Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. He's doing great. I think y'all, you know, hit the nail on the head there. You especially dad. He's, you know, just like any other baby. Mm -hmm. He does happen to have Down syndrome. And Uh that comes along with maybe some extra health appointments and checks along the way. Yeah. And extra support, of course. Um, But, of course, he'll have his own personality, his Mm -hmm. own interests, his likes and dislikes, just like any other child. Yeah. You know, we wouldn't expect anything else. Yeah. How old were you when he was born? Uh, 33. Did you have ultrasounds during your pregnancy? Mm-hmm. Um, was there anything that they felt they needed to monitor more closely or had any concerns about or anything? Nothing. They didn't even know that he had um, trisomy 21, so okay. I so found that out when he was born. After birth, okay. I just feel like he's doing really well. He's still very young now, so I don't really know if there's going to be any changes or if you'll see like a little bit things sl- that he'll be slow, like slower at certain things when he gets older. Yeah. And it's more noticeable when he gets older. But as of right now, yeah. like, I just feel like he's doing great. He's trucking along. Yeah. Good. And as you mentioned, interactive, smiling at y'all. Yeah, like, a lot. Good. He likes to argue back with me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he's very, like, observant. Like, um, I think I saw as far as specialists that he's seen since leaving the hospital is a cardiology, right? Mm-hmm. To make sure his heart is still mm-hmm. doing fine. Mm-hmm. Um, what other specialists? Well, it's seen? like the bottle feeding. What was that? We had to go see. We like tested some bottles on him. We had an appointment. Okay. Like how he's taking his food down. Okay. And that he done really well at that appointment well too. too. Okay. Yeah. And then you mentioned early steps comes once a week. Is it occupational therapy or physical therapy? I think it's physical, physical. therapy. Physical. Okay. And did he pass his newborn hearing test? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Anything else in his medical history that has gone on that you think we haven't touched on yet? No, there's nothing we yeah. really worried about, so I'm just happy about that. Yeah. <laughs> and I've just drawn out the family history. Um, so I think I saw that you have two other boys and three girls, mm-hmm. so now even with, mm-hmm. the, with him. Any major health concerns for yourself? No. Are um, your parents still living? No. They both have passed away? Yes. Um, do you know what they passed away from? My, my mom had breast cancer. Okay. Uh, I just went to my dad's funeral in Chicago a couple of weeks ago. He wasn't really in my life, so I, but I think okay. that it was like lung, can, lung cancer or something, Duval. I think so. Um, do you know how old your parents were when they passed away? My mother was um, like 41. Okay. My dad 63. had to have been in his 60s, 63. maybe 63. Um, did your mom do any genetic testing or anything? Do you know? No, I don't. Not that I know of. Not that you know of. Okay. Have you done any genetic testing? No. No. Okay. Um, before we jump to your side of the family, I just want to talk about the can- that cancer history. So, um, you know, that's fairly young for a breast cancer. Um, you know, anything under, um, like, uh, forty is you know, something or 45-ish, we consider a younger breast cancer. Okay. Um, and, you know, those people may want to consider doing genetic testing because there are genetic syndromes that could put you at higher risk for cancer in your lifetime. And if you have, um, you know, one of those syndromes, um, you may want to change how you're screening personally for cancer. Okay. Um, so, of course, since your mom has passed away, she's, you know, not available for testing at this time, but if that's something you are interested in pursuing yourself, certainly... Um, you know, I think it would be recommended and considered. Um, you can, it'd have to be, of course, a separate appointment than from today. Okay. Um, but you can, you know, come through our clinic to do that sort of testing. Um, there's other cancer genetic clinics around the area. And it sounds like y'all, um, have not only, like, kind of processed all the information well, but, you know, I think maybe looked into it a little bit Mm -hmm. and understand it. So, it's caused by an extra chromosome 21, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so they did the this karyotype test um, to see where that 21st chromosome, that extra 21st chromosome is located, because then that could impact, um, you know, family planning um, risks or chances for y'all. Okay. Um, because, so this is actually, these are his chromosomes. So isn't that, I, okay. you know, as in genetics, I always think that's cool that they actually show you. Yeah, the his actual, a, yeah. His actual chromosome, uh-huh. yeah. So this is what they did when they took his blood for the testing. They essentially, like, crack open his cells, and, you know, his chromosomes can look kind of jumbled like this, and they then organize them how we expect to see chromosomes. Okay. Which are in um, 
23 pairs. So because you get half of each from one parent and half from the other. So that's mm -hmm. why there's, you know, two of all of these chromosomes. And then you can see down here where they describe the 21st chromosomes, there's three of them separately. I see. So that's um, considered trisomy 21, just okay. like you said, because there's three individual copies of chromosome 21. Okay. And this is something that, you know, happens randomly by something called non-disjunction. That's essentially the science-y term for when egg and sperm are being made, where instead of, you know, you pull one chromosome to one egg or sperm and the other to another, they both get drawn to one. So then there you have an egg that has two 21s, and then when the sperm comes in and joins that one that has a 21 also, then you have end up with three. Okay. And then the baby has trisomy 21. Uh, they did this because sometimes the extra 20 chromosome 21 can be attached to another chromosome. Like it can be stuck to another 21 or like a 14 or something. And then that can be something that can be passed in families. Mm -hmm. um, but that wasn't the case. So that him. makes like a higher risk of me having, would have made a higher risk of me having another baby like him. Right, yeah. If you if it was attached to something else, okay. it would be a, a, a change in risk. Okay. Um, but because they're separate, um, we would say because your um, age is 33, we would say your chance um, to have another child with, um, a trisomy, not necessarily 21, but it, you know, there are other chromosomes yeah. that have trisomies, um, would be about 1% until you're 40. And okay. then that, then your risk would go to the age related risk. Okay. So we know as women get older, our chromosomes are less good at separating into eggs, um, which is why, you know, you may hear people um, of advanced maternal age being at higher risk to have a child with Down syndrome. Mm -hmm. um, but you, I, I don't like the term advanced maternal age in the first place. You yeah. know, it's just an arbitrary cutoff they've put in the literature, mm -hmm. um, which is 35. So you're not even technically you know, in that category. Okay. Um, but it's basically as women age, there's like a, a little bit of an increase, like a slope of a higher risk the older you get to have uh, a child with a, a trisomy. Okay. So that's why since you have one, a, a child already with a trisomy that we would say your risk is about 1% until 40, which at that age, you're, if the general population risk is 1%. So then it gets you know, higher as you age past 40, which is why then you switch to the age related risk. Okay. Um, so that, you know, would be the like the general um, guidelines for um, you know a chance for a future pregnancy to be um, affected with Down syndrome or trisomy, so about one percent. Okay. Until you're forty, and then the age-related risk. Uh, um, and then so um, you know people with Down syndrome are expected to have you know some delays, you know meeting milestones, mm -hmm. and um, you know with learning have some intellectual um, disability of of some level, um, but it can be so variable. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there certainly are people in the community who work and have, um, you know, jobs who have Down syndrome, and then there's ones who may be never able to, you know, reach that level of independence. Yeah. Um, so, it's so different for all, all the kiddos. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll just, you know, we don't have that crystal ball. You know, he's his, his unique yeah, self. Yeah, all and we'll different. Have to, have to let us know, um, you know, what, what he achieves and grows to, but I can see, you know, two great parents here that are going to, you know, support him. And it sounds like he has a, a good crew of siblings too, <laughs> yes. but also, um, you know, teach him the ropes. Thank um, you. Obviously, to get the Down syndrome from yeah, no, fetus. Yeah, no, not that I know of. Okay. Yeah, have, we have, uh, looks like five others, and there's one on the paternal side, paternal half sibling, right? Yes. And they're all fine. They're all fine. Um, and do you plan to have more? Um, <laughs> no. I mean, I don't know about the future, but not right now. Okay. So no, like, you know, plans to sterilize or anything? No. You know, tubal or vasectomy. <laughs> and you told me about the recurrence risk, and, you know, it's a little elevated because one child has it. It's 1%. Yes. As it... opposed to, like, one in... Like at your age, it would be like one in three hundred. It's one in one hundred. Okay. 
Uh, but um, and then at the age 39, your your age risk actually overtakes the risk that is um, due to a one child. Okay. Health guidelines, right? Um. Yes, sir. Yeah, so they can be like really closely followed. Just at certain points, celiac disease testing by two and um, uh, sleep apnea testing by four, you know, x ray of the neck only if it's so symptoms. You know, I'll tell you what the symptoms are. Okay. Because they can have a little uh, instability of uh, the neck. Okay. But not all of them. You know? Okay. Uh, but it's only we used to do extra on everybody, but not anymore. Oh, so you can't like physically tell, like by looking at it? No, no, it has to be x rays, and you have to do them in a straight and then in a extension. Okay. But, um, but if they don't have symptoms, you know, you don't expose them to the x ray. Mm. He's gaining along the curve, but you can see he's like below fifth percentile uh -huh. for the weight. Yes. And His doctor told me that too. That's premature boy, but if we do Down syndrome, they have their own curve. So on the uh, Down syndrome chart, he's actually looking better. Okay. So I was going to ask, is there like a problem with that? Is there issues? No, there's right now, there's no issue. He's increased the weight and he's going up. The most important thing is he's going along the curve. Okay. Um, he's still at the fifth percentile, so he's still a little... Uh, um, underweight based on the other Down syndrome patients. Okay. But he is also premature. So you technically, if you adjust, he's five months old right now. So if you adjust one month behind, he would be 10th percentile. Okay. Height wise, he is where he should be. Okay. So, uh, Right now, the most important thing is he's growing along the curve in all parameters. Okay. And since he is feeding well, you know, not having a hard time, not getting tired, right? Right. Then we're in good shape. Would you mind if I took a, a picture? Of the baby? Yes. Okay. It's just for our records. Yeah, that's fine. And he is in the early step? Yes. Yeah, so he'll likely need speech, you know, and OT. Speech down the line, OT, a little closer to the one year of age, mm -hmm. fine motor skills. Okay. If he continues to feed well, then he doesn't need to have feeding therapy. Some patients have feeding issues, so yeah. they like to have a feeding therapist. Yeah, play Hey, buddy! He is really cute. Thank you. So how are your other kids? You already met him? And fell in love with yeah, him. they love him. I say, who wouldn't, right? <laughs> yeah, he's very alert, interactive, very curious. You could see, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, he's very. And, yeah. Yeah. So just to let you know, so patients with Down syndrome, they um, have higher incidence of ear infections. And that's okay. because the skull is shaped differently. Okay. So that's why he, is, he would be important to make sure he doesn't have fluid mm -hmm. and he doesn't have hearing loss so that it's gonna be easier for him to ac acquire speech. Okay. Speech is this one of those things that is the hardest to come by to any child. You know, so uh, hearing is pretty easy to fix. Okay. Yes, I agree, 39 and a half. Uh, but, um, but speech is going to be like one of those that you long require, long speech therapy, and, and mm -hmm. that's fine. I mean, they, some, like I had the earliest ones that had said words was 18 months. Okay. Uh, and some still don't speak till they're five. Okay. It's really depending on, if you make sure he doesn't have ear, like infections, a lot of them end up with tubes. You know, okay. um, then uh, he's gonna be better, have better chance, and then speech therapy. Okay. But you know, Down syndrome patients they they are behind. You know, most of them have intellectual disability, but most mild to moderate. Mm -hmm. And um, but some can have normal IQ. You know, so it's it's a minority, but it's possible. There are some syndromes where you cannot have normal. IQ. Like, 
Downs is not one of them. Okay. You can still be very fun, high functioning. Some patients can live sort of like semi-independently. You know, like if somebody is there like in the duplex house, they can have one part and another part is okay. by a parent, but somebody is supervising. Mm -hmm. Some can be independent, but it's kind of hard uh, for them. Uh, but again, you know, nothing to say that he's not going to be able to do it. It's just all about, you know, how is he going to show us the way. Okay. Um, try not to compare him to others because there are some babies that are low functioning. That doesn't mean that he's going to be like that. Okay. There are others who are high functioning, so think of him that way. But okay. he can be high functioning, you can do everything you can. He's got all these siblings, mm -hmm. he's got great parents. He's gonna do well, okay. you know. Yeah. Um, and um, he hardly has a heart defect. Did they say oh. they need to fix it or? No, no. he's good. The good. So that's yeah. very good sign. They yeah. had a little small hole in his heart. They said, but it's expected to close up. So that's a very good sign. Yeah, like you know, seventy-five percent. Oh man, he just peed. <laughs> seventy-five percent of. Downs uh, actually 50 to 75 percent have heart disease, so like a lot of them spend um original initial time in the hospital after yeah. surgery. He's yeah. not gonna have that, he's gonna have a head start mm -hmm. because he can do therapies, he can be with the parents playing. So, the most the, the most important thing is the tone. You see, like this is this yes. is a low muscle tone, uh -huh. and that's what the physical therapy will work on. This is good. I mean, he's already, he's holding his head steady. Mm -hmm. So that's good. That's very good. Yeah. Does he roll over yet? Uh, sometimes. Every now, now and then now and he does, but not constant. He has rolled over before. So the good thing is that I'd say that um, patients, judging from other patients that I see at five months, mm -hmm. he's doing well on his tone. Mm -hmm. This is good tone. Yeah. A lot of them are very flaccid, like, you know, they just do not have anything. So, so keep doing what he's doing. He's mm -hmm. good. He's holding his head. So yeah. That's very good. Some, some people, some uh, children without Downs still can't hold head too well right now, but mm -hmm. he's, he's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, so as much stimulation as you can. A lot of talking, a lot of book reading, right? Okay. A lot of sibling playing, mm -hmm. a lot of therapies, right? So, you know, he's doing well on weight. Feeding is a good, really important thing because that's mm -hmm. what gives us, you know, nutrients to grow in mm -hmm. your head. And uh, just like I said earlier, you know, the ears free of fluid, that will really help him. That also helps you with balance. Okay. You know, if you if you have ear infection, it's kind of hard to start walking oh, okay. like that. So, um, so yeah, let's get him to the ENT and the eye doctor. He passed hearing at birth, right? Yeah, he did. Okay. So, you know, I just uh, do um, anywhere between now and the one year of age. Mm -hmm. You know, we can see ENT and the eye exam. Okay. Do the eye doctor. Okay. Also place a referral to child development. Mm. There you go. Hey, my cakey baby. Hello. My baby toy. Oh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, 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 yes. I'm so happy, my oh, oh. My baby toy. Hey, hey, hey. No? Mommy had nothing. I was stressed when you were born for no reason. Huh? I should have known that God was going to keep you 
and do for you exactly what he needed to do for you because you deserve to be here. Bye. You deserve to be here. Why you talk, laddie? Hey, mama, I say hey. Hey, mama, I say hey. 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 My baby doing good, you guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. We are out. We're out, baby JC on, y'all. Love you guys so much. Peace. Jason, look over here. Hi, yeah, you heard your name. Yeah, good job. <laughs> Peekaboo, I'm over here now. Bop, 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 bop. Uh oh. Uh oh. Bop, 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 bop. Hey, look at Pooh Bear. Hey, brother, you want to show him? Look. Hey, silly goose. What Go are up you to doing? him, Jeremy. Tell him. Tell him. <gasps> look. Hey. Over here. So this actually kind of checks for ear infection. Okay. Hi. The machine reads it? Yep. So it changes the pressure in his ear canal. Let's see. I know. And then it has an echo it sends, and then it reads that echo back to it in the, through the probe tip. It's measuring and sending. Mm -hmm. um, and his eardrum is moving appropriately when that pressure changes.